day ladies and gentlemen I would like for today's video Jeremiah chapter 11 in the Septuagint to show the world we had no scare we were just reloading let's begin shall we quote the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying an angel is telling Uncle Jeremiah what Yah said hear ye the words of this covenant and thou shalt speak to the men of Judah and to the dwellers in Jerusalem. Stop. Remember a couple of videos a while back? We kept seeing a difference between Judah and those living in Jerusalem. Yet, they were being spoken of as though they were the same people. Well, I think I know who these people are. You want to hear it? Here it is. Second Chronicles 15, 8 through 9. Quote, and when Asa heard these words and the prophecy of Adad the prophet, then he strengthened himself and cast out the abominations from all the land of Judah and Benjamin and from the cities which Jeroboam possessed in Mount Ephraim. And he renewed the altar of the Lord, which was before the temple of the Lord. Listen up. And he assembled Judah and Benjamin and the strangers that dwelt with him of Ephraim and of Manasseh and of Simeon. For many of Israel were joined to him when they saw that the Lord his God was with him. Example. So as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, our strange phrase is talking about a huge chunk of the supposed ten lost tribes. Did you notice how I said supposed? as though I had an issue with the common phrase. I said it like that because, Yah's will, I will do another video about the supposed 10 lost tribes. And after it's over, you will know full well why I said it like I did. In a nutshell, I think the scriptures attest, very little people in ratio were taken by the Assyrians. In essence, the northern tribes are as about as lost as you and I are. Nothing more, nothing less. But as far as this video is concerned, the scripture said, quote, For many of Israel were joined to him when they saw that the Lord his God was with him. And seeing he already had Judah and Benjamin on his side in the first place, the words, For many of Israel were joined to him can only mean many of the northern lost tribes join themselves to the southern tribes, which can mean they are in fact, quote, the dwellers in Jerusalem. But hold me to my 10 tribe theory. I will let you know when I get the green light from y'all. But let's continue with Uncle Jeremiah, shall we? Quote, the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Hear ye the words of this covenant, and thou shalt speak to the men of Judah and to the dwellers in Jerusalem, and thou shalt say to them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Curse is the man who shall not hearken to the words of this covenant which I commanded your fathers in the day wherein I brought them up out of the land of Egypt, out of the iron furnace, saying, Stop. What now, you ask? Well, since the opportunity presented itself, I wanted to show you there is nothing new under the sun. No, not the back end reaction to being in the iron furnace. You guys know my style. I'm looking at things from the other end. What I mean is, we all know for every action, there must have been a Little Miss Ivy, bust their whole head open with that knowledge. Yep, there must be an action to pop it off in the first place. Well said, young lady. Well said. And what was the action that resulted in a hard bondage that would make me think there was nothing new under the sun? You got it. Exodus 1, 6 through 12 in the Septuagint. Quote, and Joseph died, and all his brethren, and all that generation, 
and the children of Israel increased and multiplied and became numerous and grew exceedingly strong and the land multiplied them. And there arose another king over Egypt who knew not Joseph. And he said to his nation, behold, the race of the children of Israel is a great multitude and is stronger than we. Stop. Two things. First, this is the second time we have read scripture that confirms we are a race of people just like the Africans, China man, and the glorious white man are a race of people. Black is not black. And second, that particular race of people didn't have more people than the Egyptians. They were just stronger and simply more awesome than the puny Egyptians. Any light bulbs going off yet? But let's continue to see if there are any more similarities, shall we? Quote, and he said to his nation, behold, the race of the children of Israel is a great multitude and is stronger than we. Come then, let us deal craftily with them, lest at any time they be increased. And whensoever war shall happen to us, these also shall be added to our enemies. And having prevailed against us in war, listen up, they will depart out of the land. Stop. What? Let me read that again. Come then, let us deal craftily with them, lest at any time they be increased, and what's, whensoever war shall happen to us, these also shall be added to our enemies. And having prevailed against us in war, they will depart out of the land. Stop. So as you can see, the reasoning for oppressing us was to have us remain in the land. Notice, notice, losing the war is not the focal point here at all. The main focal point is to keep us in the land. Why? On the spiritual side, for everything happens in the spiritual first, the evildoers needed more time to pollute the exact same land Yah promised to our granddaddy Abram with Nephilim, just like the Israelis are doing in our promised homeland now. We have already gone over the scriptures that attest this fact. Now, on the physical side of things, I've told you before, all of the hooping and a hollering over border security, thus more Border patrols is nothing more than getting their people into position with the American people's fingerprint on the order. What I mean is, didn't we go over how NAFTA was already signed under Dirty Bill Clinton that already opened the borders between America, Mexico, and Canada, and how the Department of Homeland Security was over the Human Capital Department that is responsible for this action? Yep, they already have signed treaties that require countries to supply workers as needed. Let's not even start talking about how the war on drugs was designed to give you blacks felonies, which can only mean they can never leave the United States. But wait, people on the East Coast! Let me hip you on to something those in the Midwest, etc. deal with. We have absolutely no perception about. Did you know there are federal roadblocks set up all throughout the Midwest highways? Yep, I did an entire video series on them. Been operational for years now. I said all of that to say, if I look at the end time scenario in real time with my scripture glasses on, the extra border patrol and immigration bloodlust the evildoers have engulfed the white man in has the ultimate design to keep you coloreds in and not keep the beaners out. But wait! Just like in America, nothing 
is successful without so-called African Americans spending all of their disposable money on or in it. There will be no America if we were to leave this place under this capitalistic system. Every day, the ancient Egyptians and modern evil genius white man alike sings, we need you, we need you, like a prisoner needs a cell, like the devil needs hell, like a ding dong needs a bell. We need you, like a movie needs a star, like a golfer needs a par, like teenagers needs a car. We need you. You guys just don't perceive it. So let's continue to see what their particular scheme, for as we all know, there are many ways to skin an Israelite cat. But let's see how the Egyptians made this happen. Quote, and he set over them taskmasters who should afflict them in their works. What? Who should afflict them in their works. So off the cuff, I just seen this. So it ain't the part of getting them to work. It was the psychological effect to afflict them in their works. Mm. But let's continue. And they built strong cities for Pharaoh, both Pithro and Ramses and On, which is Helopolis. But as they, the Egyptians, humbled them, Israelite, meaning while they were putting their Egyptian sandals up our butts, by so much they multiplied and grew exceedingly strong. And the Egyptians greatly abhorred the children of Israel. Example, allow me to ask you a series of unfortunate questions, gentle strangers. Do not the scriptures and life itself attest these Gentiles are dealing craftily with us? Do not the scriptures, history, and life itself attest these Gentiles are, have, made, have made us build their American empire? Do not the scriptures, history, and life itself attest these Gentiles have tried everything except a firing squad to kill our children? Yet, just like baby kids, we just keep multiplying. And the last example, but surely not the least, doesn't countless scripture, history, and life itself attest the white man doesn't particularly care for you colors too much. Am I right about it? Somebody, anybody, hopefully everybody, tell me that I'm right about it. But let's Finally, get back to our video subject, shall we? Where were we? Oh, yeah. An angel is telling Uncle Jeremiah what to tell Judah and a huge hunk of the supposed ten lost tribes in verse 4. Quote, Hearken to my voice and do all the things that I shall command you. So shall ye be to me a people and I will be to you a God that I may confirm my oath, which I swear to your fathers, to give them a land flowing with milk and honey, as it is this day. Stop. Look what the Gentiles and nations have done to Yah's land. A land even at Jeremiah's day, flowed with milk and honey. I know, I know. The Israelis have crafted out a nice oasis, but that's just it. That was, what, sorry, what was, wasn't artificially crafted out and built on top of rocks and sand. Besides, Yah promised to do that thing 
that he does so well and perform a miracle to ensure none of you cats can use the Israeli's technology advantage as an excuse. Ms. Reader, drop it. Yep, Yah will make a land that was always a waste, an oasis coming out to the wilderness. By the above scripture alone, the city of Jerusalem wasn't always desolate, was it? We go into the east side mountain range of Zion, people. But let's continue. 